Hi, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm nervous. All right, welcome to Parenting with Vanessa Cologne. Um, today I'm gonna talk about kind of my story. And um, here we're gonna have Frickip Lola so she doesn't drive me crazy. Come here. Here we go. My calming technique here is her. So um, one of the things that I think one of the reasons why I have KFS in my school and all the reasons why I'm so passionate about children and helping is I really struggled as a kid. So for example, um, it wasn't until I was 26 that I was diagnosed with dyslexia. And at that time, I would say that everyone just thought I had a lot of energy as a kid on my ADHD and they weren't sure and I couldn't sit and I was always out doing things. <laughs> I was very social. Um, but that was like my coping strategy for a lot of things, right? Cause there's a lot of things I didn't understand. So I don't even know how I graduated high school, to be honest with you. Sometimes I'm looking back and be like, how did that even happen? There's one teacher that would give me his car <laughs> to get lunch for him. And that's why I passed the class. And my senior year, I remember getting called in and they literally had a calendar of all the classes that I missed. Cause I didn't do any of that. And, um, that was difficult, but what the hardest part was elementary school for me and, for me, I was in special ed, which in that time was RSP, which they still have RSP now, but there was a lot of teasing back then. And so I don't like to say the R words, I'm not even gonna say it, but that I was called that a lot. Um, they would pull me out of class, which I hate. And I don't think any child should be pulled out of class during a class. So one of the reasons why I actually started Cologne Family Services social coaching is that we don't pull kids out, right? But we teach within, the classroom so the child feels good about themselves and we're not ruining their self-esteem because i think that's something that i've really struggled with in my early 20s especially um working and like figuring things out because for me i don't hear sounds and people are like well i don't understand how you don't hear sounds i'm really good with my, my um, auditory is amazing i can listen to things get it no problem but reading for me um because i've learned sight words when i was younger was one of the things that you know you have to sound things out in the english language like oh my gosh school like hello sk right that's where, where the sch go from? i mean it's super confusing especially when you're a kid and you're like i don't understand what's going on and then when i would get pulled out and that was one of my best teachers ever she sat with me she taught with me spelling was like jumping jacks um, I would have to do like, and my school is all about movement does. The kids are always moving and doing it. You know, we don't have any, I don't think we have any kids. With, well, we have some other with learning differences, but really, um, um, sorry, I just had a phone call, but early I had to teach different, I had to teach myself ways that I was going to learn because I really wasn't learning. And also when I was in elementary school, I learned how to like, I don't know, look at the next person's answer, not really understand what, what I was at all like I just wasn't getting it period and it wasn't like I wanted to try to get it I was just like I don't understand why my brain doesn't work this way but look at the people next to me they're getting like A's and they like did not study I mean I would have to study for hours and hours and hours and I would still get enough and I'd be like what is wrong with me college I, there's times I would take an exam so I would study and study like no one's business and go take a test and black out like have no idea what what the test was and then hours later I would start to get the information in my brain of like oh that was number C that was number D and let me tell you to get through a junior college for me with dyslexia oh boy um let me just tell you that took five years and it was all because of algebra and they took a placement test, which I didn't realize was a placement test because there's a lot of things I wasn't paying attention or I just wasn't understanding the system or what was going on. Um, and I got, I got in the low math class, which is fine. And then I, I, I got into the class and then I, I failed it. And I guess when you fail it twice, the third time, actually the third time you fail it, you have to take the net placement test again. Then I went on to lower, <laughs> lower score. So, I mean, just for me to get out of junior college, I was doing math. Like, I mean, they were having me doing, you know, checkbooks and everything else and like check, like whatever it is that was pretty much like second, third grade level. But it was really challenging because I had no idea. I just figured, you know, I'm not that smart. Um, I don't get things the way they do. I don't understand. And, you know, it would be very very hard for me um, at times. And I just, my self-esteem wasn't great. I just felt like I was stupid, that people didn't know things. Um, but it wasn't until I was like 26 that 
I met Susan McCormick, who is like one of the most amazing people ever. And she says, I want you to sit down. And I was explaining to her what was going on. And she gives me a test. And I just like my body froze and I like literally got teary eyed. I'm like, I'm not taking this test. And she's like, no, I want you to read out loud. And so I did and I answered a couple questions and she goes, you know, you have, you have dyslexia and I'm all, what? <laughs> like, what? Like there's something for this. <laughs> so, I mean, imagine going through your entire life, not understanding what to do um, from college and then going into grad school. I had to find a grad school that didn't take tests. I can't take an exam. If you give me an exam, I'm just going to go, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. I'll pass. Right. I'm not going to do it. Cause I just, my, the way I process is just too, and it's too stressful for me and my anxiety kicks in. And the next thing you know, I'm all over the place. Um, and I can't cheat on the person next to me, right? I can't like look over cause then I can actually get in trouble now cause th that's what happens, right? Um, but you learn, what I have learned is that you learn how to fake it. And when I mean, you know how to fake it to make it, that's exactly what I would do. Like if I would be talking to somebody or doing an assignment, I'm just gonna ask them a couple questions leading up to things to see if I can get the right answer. And normally they're gonna give me the answer. When it came to doing homework with my mom, you know, I don't know mom, what do you think about that? You come up with strategies, right? And, and I see that with kids all the time. And I'm like, no, you need to think on your own. And it wasn't until about 26 when I got done, when I was actually like told up dyslexia, um, that it was like a light in my life, just like, whoa, you're not stupid, which by the way, will take a long time for me to be, actually feel like I'm not. Um, but you know, when, you, when people are talking to me sometimes, and they're going super fast or they're using th you know, words that I'm like, wait, what? You'll see like I, but you, I once again, fake it to make it. Like I will never show that I don't know something. I will pretend that I know something. You learn how to fake it. You learn how to cope in different ways. And that's where I think it's really important for me in the school because I see where my kids are struggling and I'm like, we are struggling all of us together. And how do we learn? I feel like I'm like relearning things all over again. But thank you for, you know, Susan at, you know, when I was 26 going and I started working with her every week. I started going in like sending an email to me was super stressful. Reading contracts, Forget it. I do not want to look at a contract. I have to have other people looking at it because once you get into like, I don't know, the second sentence, I'm like, what just happened? And what am I saying? And what's going on? I don't under, like, it's hard for me to process that information. <laughs> I just don't. And all of a sudden I shut down like right away. So business decisions or in person when I make, we, I will fly across the country to go meet somebody versus like sending an email. Cause to me, I want to be able to read their body language and kind of also connect. Cause I think connection is really important. But what it's been able to do for me at the school is to be able to teach these kids, you know, you're gonna struggle. You're not gonna get that. You're not gonna hear that sound. Phonics, like I don't have it. Like if someone's like, I want you to teach phonics. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna happen. I'll, I'll sit with the child and take the phonics test because I'm not gonna know which one it is because I'm most likely gonna get it wrong. And that has happened to me before already. I've had, I sat down with that kid and I'm doing it and everything else. I'm like, I would shoot with him and I got him all wrong. Um, but you learn the skills, you know, you learn how to, you know, grammar and all the grammar rules. Once you learn the rules and like someone can actually sit down with you and explain it to you, the way that you learn, it's so much easier. Um, my last year in college, I figured out color coding, right? Being able to be able to like highlight things and different definitions. And if it's going to be, if it's going to be a certain subject on this, it's going to be one color and another is there. And because I have a very strong visual memory, I can look at a car and a license plate, look at the numbers. Boom, I got the numbers, but I can't, you know, spell certain things. I can't like say certain sounds <laughs> or I don't hear them. languages. Forget it. Like I am completely, I don't even know what's going on for me. That one is, that is, that languages is just not, I mean, I studied in Spain. <laughs> Yeah, I think I came back worse because I got so confused on everything and it just didn't make any sense. And then, of course, I'd respond in Spanish and then they respond in English because they felt bad for me. Because obviously I just completely was not hearing the sounds and what I was supposed to say and my articulation was off. Um, but definitely wanted to just mention like and talk about just why I feel it's so important to really understand that kids you know that are struggling are not going to always tell you they're struggling they're not going to tell you that they don't get it they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do other things like you know copy someone else's paper or ask certain questions and it's super important to pay attention to the nonverbal cues and i'm always talking about the nonverbal cues right nobody wants to be that person in the room or the child in the room that doesn't that raises their hand every time because he doesn't understand something pay attention to the the pay attention to what's around you 
and how the child is acting. Or if they seem to get frustrated all the time, maybe it's something that they don't know, but they don't know how to tell And Asking for help is a big problem. I am telling you right now, asking for help is something I've had to learn to do. And it's taken me a very long time and to admit when I don't know something. And it wasn't until maybe even a couple years ago, I'm thinking, oh, everybody's gonna find out I'm stupid. I don't know what I'm talking about. They're gonna find out. I mean, that's my, the script in my head I'm telling myself. After all these years of thinking that I, you know, everyone else is smarter than me. Everyone else can do this. And what's wrong with me? Before I knew that I had dyslexia. Before, you know, that I, I mean, I would just be out with friends, like hanging out. And, and, you know, if I wanted to pass that algebra class, you know what I would do? I'd be in office hours, like talking to the teacher, getting to know them. So I'm very social. So I'm like, how am I going to pass this class if I can't get the, <laughs> the answers correctly? I use other strategies. <laughs> you know, you start to manipulate the system that works for you, just like getting into grad school, right? I had to find grad school that won't take tests or exams or any of that stuff. I don't do that that's gonna stress me out <laughs> more than you know. But now that I know this, I'm working with my kids on like, okay, this is the stuff that we're gonna do. We need to work through it, we need to teach. And when I start to see them getting frustrated, I want them to ask for help and I'm gonna reinforce them for it. And I'm gonna show them that I'm making mistakes all the time. You know, a couple of weeks ago, it was really sweet. I was reading a book out loud. I, there's three words I definitely said wrong. Right, I like, and normally they would be like, Vanessa, and get frustrated because like, You're, what are you doing? Get, you're saying it wrong. And it was like, no, it's okay. And, and I'm like, what was the, how do you say that again? And they would pronounce it for me. And I go, I'm really sorry. I'm like, but it's Vanessa, like no big deal. And I go, no, I made a mistake. Like you didn't make a mistake. And to me that touched me. So then the next day we go get ice cream. And I said, you guys, about those mistakes I did reading. And one of the kid goes, don't tell her. She didn't make a mistake. She didn't make a mistake. And they all said, there's no mistakes. And that to me is that I'm teaching something. Like empathy, sensitivity, everybody's struggling with something and everybody's having a hard time with something, whether you see it or not. You know, mine is in my academics. I'm not the one that's gonna be sitting here going get their PhD and like doing all this research and articles and stuff like that because first off, reading is hard, but I do read. <laughs> um, but just certain things, I just, I get lost and um, that's fine. Audiobooks work really well for me. So you just learn those skills and I think it's really important that we look at how we can help other children that are struggling and may not even know it. Because once again, every brain is different and not one is smarter than the other. It's just how we process information and that's what this is about. And we have our summer school happening at KFS school. We're doing STEAM along with other fun stuff. Susan, my learning specialist, who of course diagnosed me, is gonna be here. So she's gonna be, well, she's also here all year round, so. But she helps out a lot with the kids and you know what? Uh, it's fun time and I'm here. Uh, any other questions, but thanks for listening. You're, you're listening to Parenting with Vanessa Cologne. Bye.